What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to be making some pure copper boolean bars in this video. We're, we are getting there. We're getting very close. So Duke here uh, came in the other room a minute ago and was meowing and steered me into this room. I was kind of wondering what was up. I think he heard a noise. It's weird how cats, uh, animals are smart. One of these bars the uh, copper wire dissolved and it dropped down to the bottom of the bin. And this thing was uh, <laughs> ramped up a little bit. So yeah, the, the copper wire is dissolving. These bars are like almost done. Not too much left. But you'll notice the ingot mold that I use to make these bars, like it ramps up. So this, this edge is higher than this edge. So I drilled a hole in the highest edge just to catch the very, very corner of the bar so I could submerge it as much as possible. But we are gonna come to a point where I just can't dissolve any more of the bar. It's just gonna become not worth it, right? So that little piece that's left over is gonna go into this jar and it will be saved and it will be remelted down into another bar along with other scrap and it will be processed again later. So I've got a new crucible. I've got a new ingot mold now. It's a slightly different size. It's brand new, never been used. I wanna keep everything as pure as possible and as clean as possible. It's not exactly the same size. It's thicker. It's a little shorter, not as much in width, but it's much thicker. So we're gonna get a big beefy copper bar, which will be cool. But we need to start thinking about the rest of the process that we haven't thought about yet. Which is basically, I have a lot of scrap down in the basement that I was hoping I could purify without melting it, but now that I've done this a little bit, I see that that's not possible. We really need to melt all of the scrap that's in the basement into these. It, it just makes the purifying process so much easier, you know what I mean? which I have, this is 125 pounds right here. This is 125 pounds of copper, impure copper, ready to be purified. And I have another whole bin down in the basement. So basically how I'm doing this is every time I find copper, I find brass, I find lead, I find copper wires or whatever that are just not worth the fight, copper coils that it's just not worth stripping all of the aluminum off. You know what I mean? And I go to the scrap yard and I cash all of that in. And I use that money to pay for the gas. So I don't mind investing in the stuff necessary to do the, do the job because once you have it, you have it and you can use it forever, right? The forge, all of this stuff, the pump, the whatever the power supplies that's fine it's a one-time expense i have it the only reoccurring cost is gas so yeah whenever i find copper i find brass lead and other metals i have a huge bin down in the basement right now i mean it weighs a ton i'm probably gonna have to empty half of the bin out just so i can get into the truck it's heavy so i'm gonna go cash that in and that will pay for the gas but the biggest expense of firing up the forge is getting it hot. So what I think we're gonna do is when we decide to melt some pure copper bars, first, while we heat up the forge, we're gonna take the old crucible and we're gonna melt some of that scrap down in the basement and turn that scrap into impure bars ready to be melted. And then while the forge is hot, then we'll throw in the new crucible with the pure copper and we're gonna use the new ingot mold and make some pure copper boolean bars. Real money. Well, Duke here says we need to make some changes. He's always in the same spot, you notice that? What a tough life he has. But uh, yeah, I came home from work today and uh, one of the bars dropped down again because it dissolved the wire again. It seems like the, the more pure the copper is, the faster it dissolves. 
the more impure it is it takes it takes longer to kind of process just uh i don't know that's what it seems like anyways but i, I made some changes here instead of using 220 wire for the positive side i'm going to use 120 wire because it's thinner it's a lot easier to manipulate and kind of get the bars perfectly where where I need them and I'm going to save the 220 wire for the negative sides and I figure you know these bars that I have well, we still have a lot to get through here but they're all lopsided like this there's a thick side and a thin side so I've been drilling the hole on the thin side so that the thick side can be down in the in the muck in the water but what if we exaggerate that and tip it more so when we if we ever pour an impure bar again you know for processing into pure copper maybe we tip it more so we have a really thick side and then we have an extremely thin side that we can then drill a hole in and uh, hang it down in there and by the time we get to the last little bits of the copper you know there's not going to be much copper on there anyway but regardless it's it's all it's none of it's going to go to waste because uh i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to let this go for one more day tomorrow is harvest day anyway it'll be day three i'm going to harvest both of these top up the fluids and i think we're going to wash these two bars off whatever is left on them and they're going to go in that jar for later processing and we're going to stick two new bars in there and just keep trucking along here all right guys day three harvest day so i noticed the voltage on this one spiked up today big time there's uh not much left very little copper left on these i could probably stretch it longer i don't know that i want to take the chance you know what I mean? Plus, the growth here it looks like it has started to slow down a little bit now that we don't have as much copper surface area down in the water. And this one, we've got a jetter in the back that needs to be dealt with. Yeah, I just... I see people let these go way longer, but A, I'm not going to be able to get it out because of my wooden strut, and B, I don't want to take any chances of having a short and uh burning my house down so we're gonna take these bars out put new ones in and these guys are ready to be dropped down further all right the weigh-in another two pounds exactly and this wire is getting really thick this one not so much i'm able to get most of it off but this sucker Probably another couple of weeks and I'm going to be forced to uh, make a new negative terminal because I'm having a hard time getting it all off. I mean, there's a lot still stuck on there. All right, so we're all set back up and running here. Drop these ones down. Two freshies in there. I noticed when I turned the voltage on, it dropped all the way to four volts, so I had to crank it up a little bit. And this is what we had left over. So this is the first bar, the very first bar that I've done. And this was on the first video that I made. This bar was in one of these buckets by itself for an entire week, right? And then I added this bar in after. <clears throat> so this bar is, this is the one that rose like a loaf of bread because it's loaded with impurities and it's got these little holes and caverns inside. This bar was copper wire and some copper pipe, so it was a lot more pure, but not pure. You know what I mean? But the more pure bar, it weighed about the same going in, but it started a week later, and it actually caught up to the impure bar and passed it a little bit, because there's not much left here. So it looks like the more impure your bar is, the longer it takes to go through the whole cycle. The more pure it is, the faster it is. So we put about 11 pounds, these two bars together, 
equaled about 11 pounds of copper going in. And uh, there's only 0.8 pounds left here, these two little uh, nuggets. You can see the actual grain structure in this pure bar. You can see the little crystals. That's nuts. But yeah, I just don't want to chance it. I don't want to chance uh, burning my house down. So we're just going to save those for later. We'll melt them down into another impure bar and process them again. Well, this weekend's going to be busy. So I'm going to pull these a day early because uh, tomorrow after work I have to rip my neighbor's deck off his house and then this weekend I have to rebuild it so yeah tomorrow I'm not gonna have time to mess around with this and I noticed since we uh, put fresh copper bars in and we have a lot more surface area now these seem to be growing quite fast so I wonder what we have and here's the weird difference between the two uh, setups the setup with the uh, black power supply, I can just literally rub my thumb across and it all just falls right off. Nice and easy. See this? No fight. And then this one, like you really have to get in there with pliers to get it off I mean some of the really big ones you can break off a little bit yeah so you can break off a little bit of the top but you kind of want to pluck it close to the root as possible And the further down you get, man, it's really welded on there. And I'll show you what, like, by the... This wire is just getting, uh... Oop! There goes a piece of the wire. It might honestly be time for a new negative terminal. Yeah. There's a... Uh, there's no way. There's no way I'm getting a... Uh, I mean, this stuff is like... It is welded. Welded on there good. It's getting so thick that as I'm prying and twisting, the wire is just breaking. So I got about, I don't know, two, two weeks. I got two weeks out of this, out of this wire for whatever reason. The other wire with the other power supply has been going and going and going and going and it's still fine. I can get most of it off, but it is what it is. Just made a new one. I think this is the best way to do it. You know, a couple of zigzags back and forth as wide as you can. And then a couple straight up and down attached to this, this main thing here. So as it gets heavy, it doesn't splay open and sag. You know, and hit the bottom of the bucket. So we're gonna cut this sucker up and then weigh what we got. All right, look at that. A nice little mountain right there. 3.5 pounds. Three and a half pounds. Dang. This was a two-day harvest, so, I mean, probably a pound and a half of that weight is just the stuff that gets caked. That's why I'm, I'm thinking we're getting slightly over two pounds every three days because there is especially on this one there's a, a bunch of copper still stuck on the wire this one not as bad for whatever reason I have no clue 
y. So this time I did this negative terminal exactly the same way as I did this one. With the same, like I, I have no clue what, what the difference is here. Same power supply, same model number, same everything. And yet I'm getting totally different crystal growth for whatever reason. Same voltage, same everything, you know? Well guys, it was definitely not the Memorial Day weekend I was planning on. I feel like I got run over by a freaking truck. I'm not 20 anymore. I keep, I gotta tell myself, I gotta slow it down a little bit. But I rebuilt a deck, uh, hang a gutter on a garage. And that was supposed to be it, but then my, uh, my tenant, he owns a wholesale vape. He's like a vape shop supplier or smoke shop supplier. And uh, he wanted to expand. So he, he just bought a retail smoke shop and he had these big huge mdf solid mdf heavy as hell slot boards he had 20 of them that he wanted to hang up on the shop walls and it was like a last minute oh crap i need your help kind of thing i need to get this business up and running it's sitting there doing nothing please and i'm like all right you know you gotta you gotta help a brother out you know they they scratch my back so I'm definitely gonna scratch back, you know what I mean? So I've I've neglected the uh, copper a little bit here. <laughs> it's been it's been four days. Yeah, this one's ramped up a little bit to like almost nine volts. Water level has, oh look at the, the crusties building up on the top there. So we better knock those off. Uh, we better pull these out and just check. It's been four days. This was a bare wire when we stuck it in here four days ago, so Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, and this is why you want to check on things. All I did was just scrape the crusties off and one of the bars broke off and fell right to the bottom. And I don't know how much is necessarily left on these, so those need to be checked. Uh, we might be getting down to uh, time to replace them with new ones. All right guys, so we added another 2.3 pounds we're well over half a bucket. So we are sitting at roughly 20 pounds of pure copper crystal. God. But this confirms. I mean, I've, I've had evidence growing. But this definitely confirms my suspicion. Right? Because the very first week we put a very, very impure bar in. Let it run for a week on its own. And then we added a second bar that was more pure and by the end of it they both ended up about the same <coughs> and then in this one we put an impure bar and then a more pure bar in at the same time and look at the difference still a lot left on here but trying to put this back in with another full bar is just not going to work i tried you know but it just it's not gonna happen so I get home from work today I look down on the floor and I see a couple of bird feathers and I'm like oh it must be my cat's toy then I look in his litter box and I see this big black thing and I'm like that there's no way that came out of my cat so I walk up closer to the litter box and there's a live bird just sitting there in his litter box I'm like what the hell so my cat went outside today caught a bird brought it into the house and then released it and left maybe to go find another one I don't know you can see he's a uh, KO'd right now from chasing him around I went in the bathroom, I saw stuff was knocked over, and I'm like, oh no, the copper. Not the copper. I get in this room, and there's stuff knocked over. That cage is flipped over. I was worried about this stuff, and blue all in the rugs and footprints everywhere. But it looks like the scat mats did their job. The bird flew up onto one of these mats, and it zapped the literal crap out of him. It was a big pool of, like pee and poop and it was just flying around into windows it would smash into that window and then fly out there and smash into that window 
and then just hit the floor. So I like calmly walked up to it and pet him gently just to let him know I'm friendly. And then I just picked him up carefully and walked him outside. He didn't bite me. He didn't try to bite. He didn't squirm. He didn't, he didn't fight at all. And then I just opened my palm and he flew away. But I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And then I look inside here and there's a bird feather floating right there in my nice pure copper. Freaking Duke, man. I'm surprised he didn't kill the bird, man. He's just a, he's a weird little cat, he is. But I, I took this weekend completely off. I told everybody to go screw. I'm not, yeah, I need I need a little, little weekend off here. So I'm running around getting stuff ready. The weather looks like it's gonna be beautiful this weekend. I went down in the basement and cut up all the scrap uh, gutters into small little manageable pieces that will fit through the uh, the opening of the forge so I don't have to keep opening the lid and uh, tomorrow is harvest day so I figured uh, we're gonna harvest we're gonna pull everything out uh, this one hasn't been properly filtered yet with the new setup the new filters the new vacuum pump I kind of did it like a ghetto kind of filtering and the piles kind of growing down there Man, I, I could have sworn we just put these in, feels like. Or, or, or no, it was those we just put in. But th these have been in for like, a, I don't know, a week? Not even? Look at the progress, man. I mean, flying along. But the, these bars were a little bit more pure than uh, some of the first ones that I threw in. So I'm filtering out this container here, which technically... It hasn't been properly filtered in a month. It's been four weeks. I mean, look at the difference. Holy smokes. So this pump's going to be working uh, pretty hard. And I might have to change the filter many times. I feel like you want to do this every two weeks if you can. Uh, but if you can't, three weeks is as long as you want to stretch it, really. So I decided to try something new here. So instead of having the bars over here, I put the bars on this side. You know, because it doesn't matter if it's cramped. I can get these in and out. This side, it's more open. I'm thinking, if I put the negative terminal over here, maybe I can stretch this for four days in between having to uh, mess with it. You know what I mean? And I just loaded up the rest of the copper we've got about 22 pounds give or take we're up to about there so a little over half a bucket so under normal circumstances that's not really enough to warrant going outside and firing up the forge but seeing that I have a bunch of other copper down in the basement that's ready to be melted into bars and put in the, the queue for for processing yeah, it make it'll it'll make it worth it in that sense. And plus, we've been uh, you know I've been purifying copper for an entire month now, and I have nothing to show for it yet. So I'm kind of eager to see the uh, the final product, the end result. You know what I mean? Yeah, look at that, huh? All right, guys. Uh, major lesson just learned here. So the other one I've already filtered. That was, well, technically three weeks. We did do a ghetto filtering, but it went three weeks, right? This one went a solid three weeks as well. No, no filtering at all. And you can see that's three weeks. And this is the tops. This is the easy stuff to filter. I mean, look at the difference. I mean, that, that is insane. So, general rule of thumb, I would say, this will just make things easy. If you're going to use the orange Home Depot bucket purification method, if you can shine a flashlight down into the blue toilet water, and you can see the bottom, and you can see all the little particles at the bottom, you're good to go. You got nothing to worry about. But if you cannot see the bottom, 
you're in trouble so i would say minimum absolute minimum you want to filter your fluids every other week so i've been trying to stretch things obviously to try to see you know the least amount that i have to mess with this because obviously people have lives they have other things going on and this isn't something you're going to want to be messing with every day and since we've swapped you know put the bars on the cramp side and the negative terminal on the big side now i can go four days four days in between even having to mess with it or touch it which is great but now the filtering process you have to remember these little membrane filters that's part of your reoccurring expense so when i filtered it after two weeks i went through five filters uh when i filtered that one in there i went through seven or eight filters because I, I waited three weeks this one is so bad for whatever reason every time I fill this cup I have to change the filter once it gets to the bottom so I'm probably gonna go through 10 or 12 of these membrane filters which I'm using a 50 millimeter 0.45 um pore size they do have a finer pore size it's like 0.22 um which i would imagine you would probably want to do that if you were going to turn this back into pure copper crystal but or or uh copper sulfate crystal but I'm, I'm not going to do that i just need to get it uh as clean as possible but yeah this is part of your reoccurring expense obviously once you have all the equipment you have it uh, but you're going to need propane reoccurring paper towels reoccurring electricity reoccurring and these membrane filters reoccurring expense so i mean if i'm going through two to three times for that one extra week it's really not worth it so it needs to be done every two weeks these filters are like 15 16 bucks for 50 of them so i just went online and bought like 60 dollars worth just just so I have them you know what I mean because they do a really really nice job all right so we got uh oh that wait that's pulled pork that's that's for later yeah we we got a hair under 24 pounds I gave this sucker one last shakedown just try to get as much as we could so you ready Duke come on let's go fire up the forge all right so I got a a cinder block here and I shimmed it up nice and level in both directions here and that'll be for the pure stuff and then for the impure stuff I might actually try to find something and do more severe angle it'll just make the purifying process a little easier or maybe I'll just leave it as it is but we're gonna fire it up uh, we use these two half empty tanks first and melt through all of this uh, scrap and get the forge nice and hot because the hotter it is the better and cleaner they pour what are you doing duke are you watching make sure no copper gets away sheriff duke all right first tank only had like a quarter so we already shoot through a quarter I have the full tank sitting in the Sun warming up Got about a half maybe one third in that bottle we should be good I think we're ready to start pouring some uh, some junk bars oh there's a lot of slag on this I better get that out So that's the last of the gutter. 
this tank is uh, just about gone. I gotta keep pouring extremely hot water on it to like get some more pressure out of it. Just waiting for this stuff to melt, a couple more bars to come out, and then we're gonna swap over to that. All right, what did we get for scrap? stuff in with a brand new crucible brand new everything so I imagine I'm gonna have to let it melt down and pull it out to add more in it there's no way I'm gonna be able to add more through the neck of the forge so I'm gonna get rid of these and maybe we'll add it right on there so I took a metal plate and I bent it to kind of create a little funnel point and then I just pour some of this into here in very small amounts and uh, I usually try to pick out the big ones uh, right before I pour it and I throw these in by hand and then I'll pour in all the little ones just keep adding slowly let it melt down we should be ready to make a bar very very shortly Unfortunately, we melt, melted the bucket a little bit until I figured out the uh, this metal dish trick. Which, that's a temporary solution. I gotta find something better. I need to find a big metal funnel that has a wide opening that I can set right on the, the opening of the forge. Because the problem is, I have to pull the crucible out. It starts cooling off. The forge starts cooling off. By the time you get it reloaded, put back in the forge, it takes even more gas, you know, to get it back to hot and get it melted right to the center. So the less times you gotta open that lid, the better. That's why with this stuff, the scrap, I just feed it in through the top. And uh, these copper gutters are a lot more pure than the last ones I had. See, no rising like a loaf of bread. Got a nice uh, wrinkled, like a brownie natural side, which is usually a good sign that it's uh, pretty pure or closer anyways. But we've got 10 more there. And then here's the pure stuff. So the last pour was a little under the other two. And remember, we went out, we started with 24 pounds I, I thought it was roughly 24 pounds minus the bucket weight is what we went out there with and pure copper crystal so let's see what we got bar one well this is actually bar three 6.8 pounds they're even bigger 8.5 pounds and this one is 8.6 pounds but if we put them all 24 pounds went out with 24 came back with 24 that's a beautiful thing all right closer look time look at these 
chunky monsters, man. Nice brownie backs like we like to see. And you can tell, man. When you're pouring pure copper, it's like liquid. It's like water. You don't need to add a bunch of flux and borax. You don't need to do any of that. You don't need to add any borax. There's nothing floating. You don't have to skim anything. It is clean, clean, clean. Right to the last drop. I mean, I literally poured the last drop of copper out of the crucible and I looked down inside and it was clean, it was empty, nothing stuck and caked on the sides, nothing. I mean, it was clean. But this is the, uh, the first bar ever right here. I stamped them. So this is 01. This is the first bar. I stamped WC. Working class. Three nines and CU for copper. You just can't hesitate on your pores. That's why I got these little dimples. You see like these dimples here? It's because if, if it's not like, I mean, you got to keep the uh, ingot mold piping, piping hot. And when you go to pour, I mean, you can't hesitate. You have to just do it. But I was scared to lose my precious, you know, copper drops. So I hesitated on this one a bit. And I got uh, a couple little... But, you know, it adds character. And yeah, I could, I could spend more time now and grind and sand these things down like a mirror. But do I really want to do that? No. Nope. The amount of work that went into just these is insane. Like, I see why the premiums are so high and copper and this is the third bar a little under I was getting better at pouring at this point I only have one little thing here but uh, yeah pretty nice so it looks like uh, well we started the month kind of light right because I started with one bar and then we kind of scaled up but after a month we got 24 pounds of pure copper bars you know on the back end so and I, actually I think we're more than that now now that we have the two setups going yeah we're probably making more than that with the two Home Depot buckets right now so I guess the big question is is it worth your time if you're if you plan on selling it tomorrow hell no hell no it is not if that's if that's the case, I would just sort it, put it into bins, and go go cash it in. Even even just melting bars in the first place, if you just melt them, I mean, I guess you don't have to purify them if you were still going for the long game. But you're still gonna get scrap. It's still scrap because it's still you know impure. But if you understand uh, gold silver copper this is money this is real money god's money you know what i mean it's just a lower denomination i feel like silver is going to be moving up into gold territory and copper is going to be moving up into silver territory when it comes to price not tomorrow but in the future of course that's where it's headed it's happening right before our eyes so, like, it's a big upfront cost to get all of the equipment necessary, and it was quite a bit of work. I mean, this is one month. This is an entire month of work. You know, and, I mean, yeah, it's backyard boolean, but this is boolean copper, man. This is, uh, as good as it gets right here. I mean, it's a nice final product, though. This is clean. This is super clean. And again, I could go and grind this down and make it like a mirror, but yeah, it's just, you, you don't know how much work it took just to get to here, you know? And the premiums, I see why the premiums are so high on copper, because like, with, with like silver and gold, it's like such small amounts are big money. So if you have the proper setup and you can pump out a bunch of coins and you're making a small premium on every single one, you're making bank. But with copper, you know, you need a lot more of it. So I, I'm looking up copper. I see five pound, 
five pound copper pieces with a 40 something dollar premium attached on top which is nuts so i mean my plan to hold this stuff long long term especially this this will never go to a scrapyard i want to hold this long term until the price triples quadruples who knows and then when i do sell it i'll sell it to an investor and maybe i could throw a 20 dollar premium and it would still look better than the premiums that are out there today you know what I mean? I plan to make a YouTube video for every single bar. That way there's a, there's a log. You know what I mean? You can see how they were made, where it came from. They're all going to be numbered. And they're all going to get stacked up. But, I mean, if you understand... For instance, gold and, and silver are in a 40-year cup and handle bullish pattern. And silver needs to get back to 50 before it even breaks out and goes, who knows? And, and copper sitting there tapping the $5 level and it's, it keeps coming back down. Obviously, you see gold is like the, the least volatile out of the three. Silver is even more volatile and copper is the most volatile. But if you understand that cup and handle pattern, and you understand where silver and gold are going, copper is going to follow right along. And if you actually look at the gains, gold has yet to double, has not doubled yet uh, since COVID. I mean, I, technically it kind of has, but it hasn't sustained it. Silver has more than doubled, more than doubled, and has sustained it. Copper is way more than both of those. I mean, it's like, it's, it's knocking on the door of, of tripling copper. I mean, once we break above that $5 level, yeah, we're, we're knocking on the door of tripling in price. But again, sustaining it, would be something else, you know, because copper usually and then comes screaming back down. But uh, long term, we're in a commodity super cycle. Commodities are going to explode. Currencies are going to be devalued. And these metals right here are going to hold their value. So it's not like these are going up in value. It's our currencies that are crashing. This will remain it won't lose value i mean i'm sure it, it'll gain value as well uh with uh you know the more uses that it has and the demand drives higher as the supply dwindles yeah that that can happen too right so it's our currencies are crashing plus the demand for the metals is going up and it's creating like this this double effect but anyways guys what do you think, Duke? You like it? You approve? It even has that new copper smell. But that's the process of taking these impure copper bars, purifying them, which I have a hundred, over 180 pounds of these ready to be processed. Four of them are being processed now. So that we can turn it into these chunky monkeys bullion grade copper real money it's just heavy money if you put it in your back pocket it'll probably rip your pants off but uh yeah nonetheless this this is money and if you look at the uh okay well for if, if we're starting a you know 10 to 12 year commodity super cycle where commodities explode then you look at okay another confluence we have a, a cup and handle you know bullish pattern for gold and silver you know when silver hits 50 things aren't going to be good you know our currency is not going to be doing good when it breaks through and goes to 100 200 300 an ounce yeah things will really not be good where will this be 25 30 35 40 dollars a pound possibly 
You know, it all, it all depends. And it looks like if you just look at those two things, it's almost like a hint, an indicator of what is to come when it comes to the, the, the money world. They want to steer us away from by, by metallic currencies. They don't, they don't want that. They want to push us into this uh, fairy dust, uh, whatever, fake money. And uh, I, I definitely see that we're going digital. And I think it can be a good thing if it's implemented correctly. Right? We have fast transactions. Uh, but it, And I always think there needs to be a, a paper currency counterpart to the digital form. And it needs to be backed by the real thing needs to be backed by the real thing you can see the BRICS nations they're actually trying to do that you see Zimbabwe failed to do that they came out with a gold backed you know uh, new currency but you couldn't actually exchange it for the real thing which that they see that's that's where the trust comes from you need that trust so, I mean, and I think all it would take is for like a couple of people to exchange it for the real thing. And they go, yep, yeah, look, they exchanged it. And everyone would be like, oh, cool. All right. And then that would be the end of it. You know what I mean? Because people don't want to tote this stuff around in their pockets. It's much easier with like a, an app or a piece of paper. There's a convenience factor to it. But they try to manipulate and, and they're, they're clearly, it looks like things are going to, I mean, we might have periods of relief and then it gets worse and periods of relief and then it gets worse. But over the next 10 to 12 years, it looks like we have a pretty good indication of where we're headed. And I think if you have copper, you know, I think it's a cool little hobby. You know what I mean? I'm trying to dial it in so it's not so bad, right? I can go four days in between having to screw with it. It only takes me 15 minutes to screw with it. Then once every other week, I have to filter out all the fluids, which takes me like an hour, hour and a half to do both of them. And then once every two to three months, I'll go out and fire up the forge and make these nice, nice bars, right? And if we go to a central bank digital currency, they do it the wrong way and they completely get rid of cash. This becomes cash untraceable you hold it you own it it's yours they can't take it from you steal its purchasing power they can't confiscate it does not say u.s mint on it anywhere it says working class actually so yeah but anyways guys you know that's that's the process right there in a nutshell yeah keep an eye out because uh every every time I have more copper. I'm going to make another video so that every single bar I make that's numbered, it's documented, you know, in the future, people could go back and see their actual bar being made, which uh, I think is cool. So anyways, guys, make sure you subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. See you later.